Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Harold Duffy. I'm the city manager for the city of Grand Terrace. And tonight we're going to have the Blue Mountain Trail uh, project update. Uh, and with us tonight we have um, Chuck Foley, and he is from the engineering firm that we've hired to present the information tonight. Hirsch and Associates. Chuck? Thank you, Mr. Duffy. Uh, happy to be here tonight. We're going to walk through another uh, presentation on the Blue Mountain Trail and give everybody an update on where we are to date. Um, so with that, we'll start and take a look at a couple different areas here. On the right, you'll see the city-owned property. There's a green arrow, arrow that is uh, denoting where the city-owned property is, and um, we're calling that area A and B. The longer arrow in the middle of the page is at uh, Palm and Honey Hill, and that is what we're calling Area C. Uh, the project team will go through this uh, quickly here. Mr. Duffy, uh, Stephen Weiss, Eric Weck of um, Public Works Department. Of course, I'm Chuck Foley. Pam is not with us tonight. The project description. So um, we were um, brought on board uh, back in 2019, and this project description has uh, remained with us uh, throughout the process. And you know, in a short order, it was to build a trailhead and provide access to uh, Blue Mountain and um, connecting to the existing trail uh, up on the ridge line. And um, essentially, it's. It's been this, you know, the same uh, project description and order since we've begun. Project summary, uh, again, this is, has remained constant. And, uh, you know, essentially the lack of access has um, spurred the need for this, uh, this study and project. And um, we've had um, one community meeting in, in, in person and then we've done the COVID uh, video presentation and here we are again uh, back uh, walking through this with y'all. Uh, in the process we are still in the conceptual design phase. Um, we're, we're going through the fact-finding process of these sites and um, coming up with opportunities and constraints for each of these locations. And so we're, we're in that final stages now. And um, with that, we'll, we'll show you where our findings are. So the, the city property here at Van Buren and Observation, uh, just uh, below the reservoir tanks on the corner there is, is the city-owned property. The trail that we are looking to connect to is up on the uh, ridge line of the um, of Blue Mountain, and um, the the trailhead would be located there on observation, and uh, we've got to get around the reservoir tanks in one fashion or the other. The priorities have always been to obtain input from the stakeholders, and again identify site opportunities and constraints, um, design considerations versus the construction budget. So, uh, how much money does the city have to allocated towards this and can it be done? Uh, sustainable design, so minimize impact to the mountain and minimize uh, maintenance efforts down the road. Uh, provide a public and functional trail and uh, we want to uh, ensure that they, it does not detract from the quality of the community and um, protect the existing, the existing hillside. Our proposed parking lot and trailhead um, 21 cars, you'd have ADA parking in there. Uh, previously discussed, it would be a permeable parking lot. Um, the um, city's received a grant, and uh, the grant has a description for what this trailhead is. Uh, we, we would propose a small restroom building there um, and um, essentially access to the, to the hillside from this, from this location. Layout option A, so south, the north is kind of straight up and down towards the top of the page here. 
Um, this southern route takes the trail along the south side of the reservoir tanks. Um, there, the opportunities here um, essentially are that the city owns, owns the, the trailhead property. Um, it can be uh, constructed and you can um, meet the existing trailhead up on the, on the hillside. Uh, and there's a way to get an easement. The, the constraints here, of course, were that, and we learned this from our first community meeting, is that the, the landowner um, that owns the Avocado Grove and that property, property the city does not own, um, had expressed um, concern and did not want the trail uh, venturing into that, into that property. So um, the city doesn't own this, this property, and so it it's, would not be able to construct this trail on, on private property. Uh, the other issue here is that building a primitive trail from the proposed trailhead location to the upper trail is quite expensive, and it, it would exceed the budget that the project uh, has allocated to it. So, you know, doing a, tr a primitive trail in a tr trailhead such as this, it's, you know, roughly in the $1.8 million range. Option B, so option B is the northern route, and that takes the trail from the trailhead location on observation to the north side of the water tanks. And while this um, approach is certainly feasible from, from a construction standpoint, we learned at our first, our first community meeting that homeowners that live in the development um, to the north of the trailhead and, and, and below this are not interested or do not want uh, a trail up on the hillside up above the back of their houses. We also met with the water district and they are not in favor of bringing a trail in, in close proximity to the gates um, and fencing that surrounds the reservoir. So we, we have two stakeholders here that, that have expressed interest that this is something that would um, force them to not support the project. So as we walk through this, we want to say that um, it, the property faces some opposition. Uh, the site does allow physically to have to construct the trailhead and the parking, but we've we've got stakeholders that are that are really uh, not in favor of that. Uh, due to the location of the trail, either to, to the north or the south. We can construct the trail on the hillside. Um, however, it's quite, it would be quite expensive to do so. And um, we still need to traverse past these reservoir tanks or uh, in, in back of the, uh, the residences. So um, both A and B, while it's, they're, they're able to be um, built, um, we do have that opposition noted to those designs. So this brings us to a third location, which option C, which is at, again, Palm and Honey Hill. And this um, location here would allow, it has um, you know, some flat area down at that corner and it would allow a trailhead and connection to the existing trail uh, and um, easement that um, would certainly work within the city's budget uh, from a standpoint of, of uh, construction costs. The, the opportunities there, that, as I just mentioned, that it's adjacent to the existing trail and that existing trail already has a uh, maintenance um, easement and agreement with it due to access to the to the top of the um, whoops due to, due to access to, to get to the infrastructure on top um, the constraints here are that the city does not own that property and that the owner that does own the property um, really won't sell it to the, sell the remnants of the property or, or work with the city on this property until a hillside overlay is uh, entitled you can see um, 
Honey Hill and Trailhead development, you, you essentially could um, extend Honey Hill into the project site. You could site a trailhead uh, and parking adjacent to the existing trail and um, essentially you would be done from a standpoint of, of trying to gain access to that trail. You wouldn't have to build, you know, 600 feet of, 700 feet of primitive trail along a hillside. So it's a much uh, more inexpensive project from a standpoint of accessing that trail. Next steps. So in order for um, a trail project to move forward on option C, a hillside overlay would have to be developed and processed. Uh, and that would, that would be a, uh, a function of the landowner submitting a, uh, a, a development plan to the city. And that would be run through the planning department and ultimately it would be going to planning commission. Uh, for approval, which would be a public process. The city would then either write new, a new hillside overlay for the 40 acre site or apply existing hillside ordinances to that property. Um, so that's a, a, a function of city government and, and what would need to occur in order to get that approved. And of course, um, the owner is going to require um, this to be processed prior to moving forward with this uh, access and trailhead. Some of the risks uh, certainly are that um, there's some grant funding that the city has, has uh, been awarded and there's a timeline to that. Uh, so um, it's, pos it's, it's possible to, to submit um, a, a request to extend the deadline on that but um, it is not, is not guaranteed. So there's a possibility that you could, that the city could lose grant money if this were to, um, if the timeline was to extend past that deadline. With that, we'll um, end this presentation and open it to comments. Is there anyone in the audience who might have any questions? Sir, do you have any questions about the Blue Mountain Trail? Yes. So if you want to go to that microphone there and just push the push the button and you can speak there. No, the microphone on the on the desk. So you go ahead and you speak Spanish? Sí. So we'll have a translator for you, go ahead. No más, no más vine a ver qué estaba, qué iba a pasar con lo de la montaña, pero no. He just came to get some infor more information about what's the plan uh, that's happening in the Blue Mountain Trail, but he doesn't have a question. So we have no questions for Zoom, okay. Um, so with that, um, we'll, I guess we'll wrap this up. Um, and uh, is there anything else you'd like to clarify, Chuck? Are you fine? I think we're happy to respond to any questions that may come in as a result of this presentation. So if there aren't any tonight, then uh, we're, of course we're available at any point to, to provide information. All right, thank you so much, Chuck. Appreciate it. Thank you, citizens.